So we've taken a look at a lot of budget cases in the last uh, few case reviews slash unboxings that we've done, but today we're gonna kick it up a notch. We're gonna go all the way up to the Dark Base Pro 901. I don't know what 901 means. I sure hope it doesn't mean dollars. Okay, so uh, one of the things I wanna point out about this case that it really sort of markets itself to is the fact that it's very modular. So as we take it apart, we'll look at some of the modularity though, but a lot of this stuff is on rails and can move and allow the case to sort of be configured to fit your build rather than having to have your build fit inside of your case. And one of the more unique things is the fact that it has a removable motherboard tray, which is something that you typically don't find on like quote unquote mass produced cases these days. You would only find them on like more bespoke, custom run, high-end, super high-end brand cases. Uh, but this is now allow you to be able to invert, so make it a right or a left side PC. Uh, but you know what, it's kind of nice to see Be Quiet sort of sticking to their roots and not just following the, you know, let's put some fans on the back wall and make the front and side glass and everyone just looks the same these days because they're all following the exact same design cues. So it's a breath of fresh air to see that a brand is like, you know what, we can continue to innovate and not just imitate. Okay, so when you unbox it, we have an accessories box, right? Okay. I thought that was gonna be kind of small. This is probably the uh, radiator mounts and stuff. Let's see here. Oh yeah, so check this out. Already we have, clearly this is like a cable cover or something you'll see on the inside. Here is an additional radiator slash fan mount. This is a very similar top grill to like what Nick is currently making for our, my thing. Anyway, we have a mesh panel. Now this will be for the very front of the case and you'll see in a second that you can turn this case from a solid silent front or a mesh front. So no longer do you have to like, do I want the mesh version that will make Steve happy or do I want the solid version which will make temp suffer a little bit but aesthetically and acoustically better. I don't have the ability to test acoustics and whether or not the acoustics or uh, claims are holding up, but I can test aesthetics because I have eyeballs. So the 901 does come with a giant case condom with uh, its brand all over it in case you forgot what case you bought or who you bought it from. It's also a weighty boy. I want to point that out. It, it's easier to take it out with two people. Of course, I didn't do that because I am just the size of two people, so that should count. Anyway. This is kind of, this is nice. This reminds me of the days of, is that a, you know what? Is that plastic or aluminum? I can't tell. I can't tell. Is this a wireless charging port on the top of your panel or your case? It's got Qi charging right there on top. Let's go and talk about some of the size specs before we start to really, oh, this is part box. I thought I said party box. I was like, dude, it's a party in a box, ready to go. Anyway, let's just talk about some of the sizes and stuff, stuff that fits in here. All right, so it's a XL ATX, EATX, ATX, MATX, and Mini ITX. I dare anyone to put a Mini ITX in this. Anyway, it's a full tower, obviously. PS2 ATX uh, power supply, 603 millimeters by 254 by 569. Um, it is steel and ABS plastic and aluminum. So it weighs 17.5 uh, kilograms net, 20.9 gross. I'm assuming that's means with the brackets and stuff. So the IO has one USB 3.2 Gen 2 uh, type C, four times USB 3.2, an HD audio, uh, fan controller and ARGB controller. It's got eight PCI expansion slots. So it could fit up to 16 two and a half inch drive bays. It comes with six, up to seven three and a half inch drive bays with two included, and up to one five and a quarter with one included. Wow, this was the last time we saw five and a quarter included in anything. Anyway, pre-installed two times silent wings, uh, four PWM 140 1900 RPM fans in the front, one in the rear, uh, and then uh, we could fit three 140s in the front, three 140s in the top, of course, 120s as well. Three 120s in the sides, so that's the motherboard panel tray. One 140 or 120 in the rear and one 140 or 120 in the bottom. Now, of course, the radiator sizes are gonna also correlate with those fan sizes. Now, up to G uh, CPU coolers, it could fit up to 190 millimeter high coolers. The PSU length up to 288, 495 millimeter long uh, graphics cards. All right, so let's go ahead and start talking about the outside of the case. First, I want to start with the manual here. The manual is going to be important on this one because it's modular, so you got you to have a good manual. Be Quiet's always had really good manuals, though. So, for instance, this one's probably going to be full color. You can see the breakdown of all the radiator sizes that can fit. Uh, here's all the pieces, like, kind of blown apart. You can see how they break it down into fans. It's kind of nice to see. Oh, we have part color here. 
Anyway, this shows you how the front panels and stuff can come off. And that's what I was starting to talk about here with that mesh panel on the front. So here's the front panel. You can switch this from a solid panel to the mesh front for better airflow. So you can choose this sort of a brushed aluminum look or you can switch it. It looks like it just pops right off there. Yeah, it's taped. Let me untape it. So you can switch over to a mesh. I feel like the mesh would go along pretty well with this build. So considering how much mesh there is on the side, if you left the side, the front panel on, it should still have pretty good airflow. The thing is, this would just be more an aesthetic piece, even though it has this kind of a sound deadening material on the front. This sound travels in all directions, so this doesn't, in my opinion, do much, considering you have all the vents around it, which would leak all the sound as well as air. <laughs> so, whatever. I, I guess it just makes people feel better to be like, I have a sound deadening panel in the front. So here, and it is plastic, by the way. This is not metal, which is kind of sad. Kind of reminds me of how Fractal does things these days. But whatever. So let's now just pop in. It looks like it's, it can go either direction, like it's mirrored. There we go. Cool. So plenty of airflow. Let's pop this guy off. Here is our uh, filter, which does snap in. So you have to actually unsnap it. It's not like Velcro. It's got these little snaps right here. Not Velcro, but uh, magnetic. So it's got these little snaps. And then you can, we now see our very first it's a little baby filter. It's a little baby filter. <laughs> this is what appears to be the five and a quarter bay, because if we look at the front panel, you can see this can fold down to give you access to your five and a quarter bay. So that would be, these days, I'm not sure what people would put in a five and a quarter bay. It used to be fan controllers and stuff, but now everyone just runs them off either their ARGB slash RGB or fan controllers or cases have them built in these days, but that's how you access it. That flips down and then that would be access to your five and a quarter. We've got four screws holding this on, and then you can see the whole front bracket just comes off. Now, this does have pogo pins right here, as you can see, because check this out. Our fans attach directly to the pogo connector hub. So you don't have to run these anywhere else in the chassis. You have up here, the controller and everything's already pre-wired in, so you're gonna have cables and stuff running along the chassis so that they all connect to the controller without having to run wires there. So that's a nice bonus to see. If you had the radiator in here, then you have your fans going right to that. Now, of course you can't do that with the tubing, but you can do that with the fans. We also have this remo removable plate right here, which is taped down. This is to give you more clearance for fat radiators with push pull, et cetera, et cetera. Let's go ahead now and take a look at the top piece here. But default, the top is configured with a solid panel on here. Now that's because, again, this is set up out of the factory as kind of a more noise optimized sort of a setup. But as soon as we pop these off, which come off really easily, this piece can go back on, which as you can see, now gives us our airflow for having top exhaust fans or radiators or whatever else you put up there. It's funny, as I tear this case apart, it's now nice to have such a big table because as you can see, I can lay all the parts out. Uh, anyways, I expect this back panel to also have the sound deadening material on it, which I also don't feel is going to do much considering you have this opening right here. La 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 la. I mean, sure it does something, but let's be honest, this, this is feel good stuff. There's, there's been testing that's been done to shows like these panels with the surface stuff mounted to them helps a little bit, but it's not great, but whatever, I digress. Check out the uh, cable routing. So like we've got these nice channels right here, which are metal, by the way. So these allow you to have areas to hide your cables away nice and orderly. Let's see, our cables that are pre-installed with the controller that have to make its way to your motherboard in some way. Two USB 3.0 flat sort of ribbon cables, which is nice. These are easier to route. HD audio, which is junk. I don't know why they're even there anymore. This is our SATA power for the controller up front. Here's our USB-C. This is gonna be more than likely our RPM slash PWM signal sent to the controller so that our motherboard can still control all the fans in the case, uh, albeit as one particular fan header now. So that means all fans, radiators, exhaust, intakes will all ramp up and slow down together, which is fine. Um, but you can still control that through the motherboard. And then a second, see that's a fan wire. Oh, this is for the wireless charger. So I can plug in my test power supply. I guess we can test that now, because I want to know. 
Wow. Hey. Okay. So Phil and I were just saying, this is one of the more forward thinking case designs we've seen in a while. <laughs> Wireless charging built into a case. Nice. Now the front panel, you have a dedicated microphone and headphone jack. So instead of it being a combo, it's a split. These are the USB 3.0, a USB-C, and a physical power button. Everything else on here is actually touch. So we have fan sync. So that sync on and off is gonna basically mean if you sync, boop, it's gonna take this header, which is controlling all the fans in the case, and it's gonna sync to uh, whatever the motherboard settings are. Otherwise, you can speed and slow down, or speed up and slow down the fans with this touch panel. This is a touch panel. Um, same goes for the ARGB lighting. So if you hit sync, it's going to use the ARGB header that's on the front or that plugs into the motherboard. And then if you don't want to use that, you can just push these different buttons right here to cycle through the lighting modes. And then when you want to sync again, just push the sync button. But this is a touch panel. Cable Mod is proud to announce our new 90 degree 12 volt high power replacement cable sets. Designed to eliminate tight bends on your GPU, the C-Series cables feature standard and reverse 90 degree connectors right on your cable and terminate to standard PCIe plugs designed for your specific GPU. Available in most popular PSU styles, the C-Series cables offer peace of mind with the highest warranty policy in the industry. To see the supported list of PSUs and full warranty policy, follow the sponsored link in the description below. All right, so as we dig deeper into the case, the side panel, my God. This is probably some of the thickest glass I have seen on a case. Yeah, four millimeters thick. Some, so glass is almost like a must now on cases these days if you want to stay competitive, but it's also got a steel frame around it. So hopefully that will give it plenty of rigidity. And if you did sort of drop it on the corner, um, Although the glass does stick out past the frame slightly. I don't know if you can really see that. So if it drops in the corner, it could still shatter. But I just want to point that out. This gives it nice rigidity so that at least the glass isn't going to twist and shatter. These also might be the biggest, most German designed zip ties I think I've ever seen <laughs> in, a, in a chassis. So the top panel also has four captive thumb screws, just like the front that I showed you for the removable front mount. The top has the same thing. So this makes it easier for you to get your radiators and stuff mounted. It also has the same pogo pins and three fan headers so that your radiator fans can once again wire to this and not have to run cables all around. I am really starting to like this case a lot. We've got brackets, more brackets. Here's our screws and Velcro and stuff. Mount of some sort. Okay, so the screws are not in the screw box, just some of the spare parts are, you gotta take them out. I don't know what these brackets are for, I'll have to look it up. So, I'll hang on to this, because when we rebox that back up. So anyway, there's the top panel, as you can see. It's got the three headers. Uh, you know what, the only thing that would have made this like even more forward thinking, is if this had the ARGB headers on there too. That's the only way I could see this being even more well thought out in having like its own power distribution like system already built in. Okay, so for the next part that is um, not really unique, but is something we don't see a lot of di these days anymore, that is reversible motherboard trays. So there's the motherboard tray. Wow, so not only could you have the motherboard tray in there, you could also have, if you had any two and a half millimeter drives, have them mounted to the back, SATA cabled, routed. All the wire management stuff is built into the motherboard tray. So that would allow you to be able to have like 80% of your build done before you even put it back in the system. See, that's actually really, really neat. I like that. This piece right here also detaches through these thumb screws. If you're dealing with a XLATX, you might have an issue with that interfering. So you can at least have about, what is that? About 15 millimeters extra to move it over to the left if you needed. So you can move it over from this position to that position. Also, this piece is completely removable if you're running an XLATX or something like the, W1, uh, the W3175X or a Xeon board or whatever, because you can see the standoffs come all the way to the edge, which obviously means this would be in the way. So you could take these off entirely. And then when this is in there, you can pop these off and technically run the wires through where you need for those. And this is also where you would be able to mount the additional drive cages. This guy mounts back here. 
So there's tabs right here where it fits in. See, and that just mounts there. So I guess that's just for making it pretty on the backside for whatever reason. And then when you want to take it out, you just push that down. So this is just a cover for the backside, I guess, maybe for making, oh, I guess that's so, you don't see all the back of the SATA cables and power cables through the vent. Now, if you wanted to mount the fans or whatever here, then you have to remove this screw and you have to get rid of the drive cage essentially. And then you replace it with this fan cage. All right, so that just pops out like that. This goes in and takes its place. And then you screw it down. And now you have a spot here to be able to put your fans and even on the other side a radiator if you wanted to use the back wall. Everyone has sort of just now rely, has relied on this space here in some way uh, for mounting fans and stuff, which I guess having the flexibility of doing that is a nice thing. It's just nice to see that Be Quiet is not only relying on that considering the fact that we have so many different ways that we can obviously mount things up. I'm starting to run out of room on this table as these pieces are all being expanded out. Also too, one of the things that they do give you here is this giant, and I do mean giant, are these magnets? Yes, these are magnetic. This giant GPU support. That's what this is. This is a GPU support bracket. Nothing says German engineered like something this big to hold your GPU up. But I guess it makes sense considering how, how beefy some of these GPUs are these days. Uh, anyway, when it comes to inverting the motherboard, there's a lot of configuration that you have to do where you have to basically take the motherboard and this piece out and then everything basically flops in here. Um, I'm not gonna do all that right now because I don't wanna reconfigure it, but what that basically allows you to do is to switch the side that your chassis is on because if you take a look, everything has to switch over. Like this, this mid panel here, the plastic cover and everything on this side, you can see it's all mirrored. It's got the same indentation because you have to switch your panels too. So if you wanted to go from a, right now it's technically like this, right? The windows on this side to switch everything over, you got to invert everything. And the only way you can invert the motherboard is it ends up going upside down. So that is one of the ways that that is possible. But if you see now we've basically taken this down to nearly just a skeleton of the chassis. This piece comes out obviously somehow, and we still have to talk about the bottom. But if you wanted a little extra airflow through here, this guy pops out and then this vent comes in right here. Oops, get in there. So that vent pops right in, which I'm not doing right, there we go. So this will get you some extra airflow from any fans that are maybe half underneath this shroud. Cause if you do three fans in the front, part of the front fan, the bottom fan is gonna be blocked. But this can actually scoop that air back into this chamber. Cause if we look at the vents, you can see with the way that they're louvered, the air is gonna come through and then back up through into the top chassis. So you can fit your three fans and then have airflow from that bottom fan, still making it up into the top chassis right there. So, so many little things have just been so well thought out. We have our PSU chamber, which does have a filter that comes out the front, which runs the entire length, the bottom of the chassis. You can see right here, we even have some mounts. So these bottom holes right here are actually different mount spacings for not only a fan, as you can see, you could have an up fire fan right into, uh, well, that would be hitting the drive cage. You have to take the drive cage out, but these are also mounting locations for water pumps. Remember, Be Quiet is also a very water cooling friendly brand that wants to give you as much option as you can to be able to mount your water cooling and stuff. So that's why you also have such a big opening right here for the front to be able to fit fans, radiator, and tubing. And if you do a, a rad that doesn't go all the way to the bottom, like a 240 or a 280 up here, you can use the bottom half for having all your water cooling pump and stuff situated down there without having to uh, worry about fitting it all in the top half of the case. The downside is you do lose the two three and a half inch drive base. And then over here, as you can see, the power supply link that it talked about. This wall right here is riveted in, this does not move. So this is that length measurement it was talking about right here that's not adjustable. However, with higher end power supplies now, giving you 1200 plus watts and their standard ATX size and not the, like the super long ATX power supplies, you should have more than enough room here to have your power supply, your excess cables hidden and make your, you know, reach anywhere in the chassis. Now it is a big chassis. So you need to keep in mind that the, uh, the length of your cables also need to be long. 
So if you're gonna be getting custom cables and stuff made, I would definitely recommend that you get some links and give yourself a little bit of extra and then just hide the excess down here if you don't need it. But anyway, this is a probably one of the most modular chassis I've seen yet. It, it's hard to find anything to complain about because I feel like the amount of adjustability they've given you with not being anywhere near as big as a tower with this kind of thought process in it would be in the past. Because typically a, a brand would be like, how can we fit all this stuff in here, but none of it's removable. So you just have this giant tower that was just a huge open box, which now you can completely customize. So there you go, guys. Hope you've enjoyed this teardown of the Dark Base, Dark Base Pro 901. I, I think they call it 901 now because it's probably like 901 cubic centimeters or something like that. I, I wouldn't be surprised. But or 901 parts. Easily, easily, yeah. And then, like I said, some of these other parts here are just additional um, cable management rails, five and a quarter bay. Um, this bracket, I'm still not entirely sure what this is for. Sure, that could probably go there. I can't possibly cover every nuance of this case in one video. Also too, uh, I forgot to mention lighting. It's very subtle lighting. So you do have a, a RGB light that comes across here. And then right above the be quiet on that front plate, that cross piece uh, where that door flips down has a little RGB strip in there. So in terms of lighting, it's very subtle and understated. Now all of these features and stuff are not cheap. This case ranges anywhere from 339 to 369, depending on the retailer. Newegg has it for, well, I guess 329. 329.90 is what Newegg has it for. Holy moly, it's not a, a cheap case by any means. However, it does seem to be a case that gives you more than just a box full of metal to stick your parts in. So anyway, there you go. Sound off down below if you guys have used this case or how you feel about it. Um, I have to assume with the amount of mesh on the front, once you take that solid panel off, there's gonna be plenty of airflow um, or you can sacrifice a little bit of airflow for a more clean aesthetic on the front by putting that front panel back in. But as you can see, the options are nearly endless. There's no such thing as endless options. Otherwise we'd, we'd be talking about them forever. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. As always, we'll see you in the next one. I gotta remember how to put this back together.